Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. The unbearable weight of massive talent is not only a movie with a long title, but a movie that I have been waiting to watch. It's a movie that came out this year, earlier this year, written and directed by Tom Gormican, starring none other than Nicolas Cage and Pedro Pascal. Uh, this is a movie that, uh, in addition to looking forward to watching it, it's a movie about Nicolas Cage, featuring Nicolas Cage playing himself, very meta type of a story. And I would agree with the people that say this is definitely the movie for every Nicolas Cage fan, specifically a fan of Nicolas Cage from, like, the 90s. Like, if you're a fan of, like, Face Off, of uh, The Rock, of uh, Con Air, those movies, that era of Nicolas Cage, then you will also be a fan of this movie, uh, which is a comedy action thriller type of a movie. Kind of has vibes of Pineapple Express in some in some scenes. Definitely has that buddy kind of uh, vibe to it. I won't want to say buddy cop, but uh, because they're not cops, but uh, Nicolas Cage and Pedro Pascal's character uh, form a bond and go on an adventure. And uh, I absolutely love this movie. I will be spoiling this movie uh, as I talk about it for those that are interested. I don't know how deep I will be going into spoilers. Uh, but it is a fun movie, available to stream on some service that I have access to. I don't remember exactly which service it was, maybe like Showtime or something like that. Uh, but a great movie, especially if you're a fan of the 90s Nicolas Cage. Uh, and in this movie, he's playing himself. Like I said, his career is rocky, which isn't really the truth for uh, Nicolas Cage. This dude puts out tons of movies, but I think he's definitely had, maybe more recently, a little bit more of a resurgence, especially with the movie Pig. Like, definitely does a lot more independent films, but uh, is an actor that is always very interesting to watch, whether he's in one of my favorite movies being Adaptation or in very bad movies which i don't know offhand uh one that he's in he's definitely in a lot of classics and uh mandy being a, a recent film that a lot of people liked i i think that's a movie i need to revisit definitely one i didn't watch there was another one where he didn't really speak in the movie but he was going to it was like at a Chuck E. cheese style place i don't remember he's in some weird movies there's been a few of his movies recently that I've tried to watch and were just I just couldn't get into them because they were so weird. But uh, definitely at one point, I would love to dive into the more obscure movies that Nicolas Cage is in. But in this movie, I would say this movie in, in a lot of ways is similar to Adaptation, which is one of my favorite movies, a very meta movie where... Uh, Charlie Kaufman is puts himself into the movie and Nicolas Cage plays Charlie Kaufman as well as a twin brother does, that doesn't actually exist. And in that movie, it ends up becoming kind of an action movie towards the end where this movie, I would say, is very much like adaptation, but the Hollywood version of adaptation, right? If you were to take that type of an idea, that type of premise, and make it about Nicolas Cage and make it a action comedy Hollywood type of a movie, that is the movie you would get here, which I appreciate. I enjoy the meta aspects of it. I enjoyed this the story and the, the characters and the action and how he gets wrapped up in the whole idea of what's going on where he's career is rocky gets offered he's thinking about quitting acting altogether and he gets offered this uh gig to attend a birthday party of a wealthy person who is potentially involved with criminal activity 
right? So to make this easy money, he goes. And this guy played by Javi, who's played by uh, Pedro Pascal, is a massive Nicolas Cage fan. Obviously, that's why he wanted him to come. And he has a script that he wants that he's excited to get Nicolas Cage's eyes on, get his impression of, get him to read and, and let him know what he thinks. And they end up deciding to collaborate on a story because Nicolas Cage has also been recruited by the CIA to investigate and to get information on Javi, who's connected to a crime family, right? Where Tiffany Haddish plays one of the CIA agents. So it's, it's fun in that way where, you know, Nicolas Cage is being used in a lot of ways, but then forms a bond with Javi and enjoys the process of collaborating with him. And they go on this adventure. There's a great acid scene where they decide to, to go out to brainstorm some ideas for the script. And Javi has the idea to the both of them drop acid to come up with their ideas. And that definitely that moment, those that 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 aspect of this movie very reminiscent of Pineapple Express, where these guys who are barely coherent and attached to reality are trying to navigate their way uh, through reality, which, you know, I appreciate that. It definitely made for a lot of comedy and also some great action scenes because, you know, Nicolas Cage gets in over his head as an actor working with the CIA uh, and then finding out Javi is not really as connected as he thought. He's, you know, related to and receives a lot of things from his family that is part of this criminal enterprise. But he himself isn't necessarily as involved as the CIA thinks he is. Let's take a little break from the show to promote. If you sign up for Inspired Disorder Plus for one year specifically, you get a free painting. So a year subscription of Inspired Disorder Plus is $50. The painting, the majority of them are $100. So it's $150 value signing up for one year of Inspired Disorder Plus. So not only do you get a free painting, but you also are subscribed to Plus for a year, which means that you can binge this show, the Ray Taylor Show, ad-free, the full week ad-free available on on Monday. You also get discounts that are members only pricing type of deals. All of the podcasts that I've produced in the past, close to 20 different podcasts, I've produced hundreds of episodes. There's also my personal blog. You can ask me anything if you want to start podcasting or get into art. All of that stuff available in addition to a free painting when you sign up to one year subscription of Inspired Disorder Plus. Head on over to inspireddisorder.com slash plus and become an Inspired Disorder Plus member today. And now let's get back to the show! There also, Nicolas Cage has his ego, like the younger Nick Cage, the younger Cage as kind of like his ego, where he talks to him, he's like encouraging him and trying to pump him up and get him stoked to to get back on the horse and be the movie star that he used to be, which is fun. Kind of weird looking like the, however they were able to manipulate Nicholas cage. I think they put prosthetics on him because his face definitely looks bigger, but younger like Nicholas cage looks thin in this movie, but the prosthetics make, it looks like they put prosthetics on his face to do, to make him look younger, which is interesting. Interesting. I, it pulls off the effect enough uh, to believe that, you know, he's talking to a younger Nick Cage. Uh, but I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the meta aspect of it. I enjoyed the action. I enjoyed the, the kind of the friendship where they turn to enemies and then they become allies kind of situation with Nick Cage and, and Javi. Uh, how Nick, Nick Cage's family gets brought into the mix and uh, how he finds... Javi's collection of memorabilia from Nick Cage movies, which is great, uh, and how that kind of plays in to, to the end of the movie in some ways, uh, and how Nick Cage finally has somebody to bond with over movies. Like, they're both huge fans of similar movies, and he really, you know, they that's how their their bond initially comes, is, is through their love of similar movie, movies, which Nick Cage has had problems trying to introduce his daughter into movies that he likes trying to bond with his daughter over movies 
where she's not really into the same movies, obviously, as him. Um, but then by the end, like, Javi's character introduces, like, t- they talking about their three favorite movies or whatever, and Javi just doesn't mention his third favorite movie, and then finally does saying that it's Paddington 2, which is a movie that I love. I love both of the Paddington movies. I think Paddington 2 is widely regarded as a, a great movie, uh, although some people have the opinion that Paddington 1 is better. I think they're both great. But uh, is in this movie, Javi's favorite movie, Paddington 2, and when you find out at the end where this great, like, action scenario where nick cage goes in disguise he gets to use his acting chops in order to play this other character in order to help javi out of this situation had to free his daughter and how to free their this other girl that's kidnapped like it they go through like this crazy adventure that allows nick cage to reunite with his daughter and his ex-wife and when they're able to bond at the end of this movie while watching a movie that is his daughter's favorite movie and is a movie that before the events of this film, before the events of him meeting Javi and hanging out, he never would have given her the same respect as he gave Javi when Paddington 2 was brought up. And when that... that ha- it's like so heartwarming when that happened. And also... There's an amazing callback. At the beginning of this movie, career is rocky. He's trying to convince a producer or director to work with him, and he insists on doing a read from a script. And while the valet is getting this guy's car, Nick Cage decides to recite a line from the script. And the callback of that line, how it comes back, not only comes back with Nicolas Cage, saying this line in order to confuse an an enemy but also seeing that turn at that same place where nick cage gets found out and him kind of going full nick cage going that crazy nick cage that we see sometimes in movies it's amazing like this movie you can't really have this movie with another actor Like, there is no actor working that I can think of that has the kind of bonkers range that Nick Cage has. And it's been said, I've heard multiple times, that Nicolas Cage, because he was told that people who do impressions aren't really good actors or something to that effect, that ever since he heard like an acting teacher or somebody say that, that every movie he's been in, he's doing an impression of somebody else. And that's why his performance in every movie is so different and can be so bonkers because he's like doing an impression of somebody that he thinks would be fun to be in this movie in whatever movie he's doing. Let's take a little break from the show to promote gift certificates. If you want to purchase artwork for somebody, you have an art lover in your life and you think they would like my art, but you don't know what painting to get them. I have over 2,000 original pieces of art for sale in my store, along with shirts and prints and other things. So I can understand that being a bit daunting if you're trying to buy something for somebody else. Give them the gift certificate, and then they can go to my website, inspiredisorder.com, and they can buy whatever paintings they want. They can buy whatever prints they want. They can buy T-shirts. They can buy hats. They can buy all the different merch. Gift certificates, which are available currently at inspiredisorder.com. And now let's get back to the show. And you get to see that kind of element, that bonkers element of Nick Cage in this movie, which I don't know of an actor that has that like random type of a range that Nick Cage does, right? Like there's aspects of like maybe Jim Carrey that where he's, but he's kind of like in his serious stuff, he's kind of similar in his bonkers comedy stuff in his early career is all kind of similar. Like the range of craziness in Nick Cage, I don't think is, comparable to anybody else and i don't see i can't think of another actor that 
could have been in a movie like this that would have made as, as much sense as having Nick Cage in this movie, right? Like, believing that his career could potentially at any time be on the rocks, right? Because there have definitely been times over the years where, like, he had a lot of movies in the 90s, and it definitely seemed like he was in, like, just nothing. It just wasn't on the radar, really. And then over the past decade or so, he's been doing a lot of interesting things and kind of coming, having a renaissance in his career somewhat. And then also to think of an actor who would like go along with the wild things that happen in this movie to think that an actor would do like nothing fits as much as Nick Cage does for this movie. It'd be interesting to see if they, if the writer of this movie, who was also the director, if they had other ideas, like backups. I'm sure there's been discussion of that because this movie is so specific to Nicolas Cage. I mean, you could, you definitely could come up with an actor who was popular at one point and kind of not really, or has had like a fluctuating career. There's definitely actors out there that you could see being that right like there's i don't know there's i off the top of my head i'm not thinking but there's definitely actors from like the 90s that just aren't as popular anymore right but nobody with that same kind of character as nicholas cage has which i think makes it work so much more but yeah i i really did enjoy this movie i enjoyed the heart of this movie i enjoyed you know, the his his id coming back, the young Nick Cage coming back and him having the, the confrontations with that. I love the the callback of the line read. I love the fact that he's able to bond with his daughter because of Paddington, too, you know, which is a movie that it's just like everything kind of fits and makes sense for the reality of this movie. And just to see how ultimately them collaborating became the reignition of Nick Cage's career and how well received the movie was and how like sincere and passionate Javi is with movies and creating the script as versus most people were kind of like want to be famous want to be successful without actually putting work in or actually putting anything out there you know and then Tiffany Haddish playing the CIA agent I thought was pretty good Probably, you know, the, the least funny character, you know, like as far as a comedian playing uh, one of the characters in this movie, the CIA agent, not really a lot of humor in it, but still good. I enjoy seeing her and stuff. Uh, but yeah, overall, I really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was a whole lot of fun. And if you're a Nick Cage fan, it's a no brainer of a movie. And, uh, you know, win, lose or draw. Whatever you think. Nick Cage is always Nick Cage, right? And you could, you could look inside of yourself, right, and find your inner Nick Cage, right? And you could look at yourself in the mirror and you could tell yourself, you're Nick fucking woo Cage! New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace out! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind